Hello and welcome to the third Space Invaders part tutorial. In this tutorial video, we're going to take our basic game shell where our player can move left and right and allow them to fire a rocket at our bad guy, at our alien, by pressing the S key on their keyboard. So this is going to be a couple different parts how we're going to break this down. We're going to start by actually creating our variables. So let's make a new section in global called rocket. And we're gonna need a couple variables. The first is gonna be the variables for the actual rocket itself. So we know that we're gonna need a variable for the rocket's X and Y position, and we may add more than one rocket down the road. So I'm gonna call this R1X. And when the game starts, the rocket is with the player, right? So when we press the S key, the rocket's gonna fire and it's gonna move. But when the game begins, the rocket's at the player. So I'm actually gonna set R1X equal to P1X. So that way the rocket begins with the player. R1Y, likewise, is gonna be P1Y. So that way, again, the, the rocket starts with the player, okay? Uh, and again, just my little comment, R1 for rockets one. We're gonna need our rocket size. So let's do R width is going to be, uh, it's gonna be small, let's go like seven. For our height, Let's make that uh, 20, which is going to kind of be a long, skinny rocket. Where the rocket's going to move, so we're going to need a, our speed at some point in time, say 5. Uh, we're going to have to realize where the rocket is. So is it with the player? Is it in motion? Or has it collided with an object? So let's call that our position or our one position because every single rocket is going to have its own unique position. Keep track of where rocket currently is. And I'm actually going to move that underneath X and Y because they all kind of go together. And then lastly, we need a variable to know, are we firing? Are we pressing the S key? Should the rocket be in motion? And let's just call that fire equals false. So this is now a true or false variable Am I firing the rocket? So uh, when the game starts in global here, no, you're not firing the rocket, but we are going to say that when S is pressed, you are firing the rocket. And that's actually how we're gonna start here. So once you have these variables set, let's scroll all the way down. We have our function key pressed to use the left and right arrow keys, but we don't wanna use an arrow key to fire the rocket. We wanna use the S key, and that is an alphanumeric key which means we can't put it in key press. Key press is for coded keys, so arrow keys only. Let's add a new function below the key press function called function key typed. Key typed is for your alpha numeric keys. And I like to close key typed immediately so I don't forget to do it later. It's gonna look kind of similar to the, the uh, key press functions. So we're just going to say if key, not key code, but if key equals equals single quotation S single quotation. So that's if key is equal to S. This is how you do an alphanumeric key. So whether it's a letter or a number, you code it this way, unlike the coded keys that we did in key press. And, and key is pressed. That remains the same. Well, if we're pressing S, well, that means that fire equals true, fire rocket on key press. Else, an else statement is what happens when something isn't true. So when we're not firing the S key, fire equals false. It's important that we set, um, fire back to being false or else the rocket's gonna be firing forever. So when S is pressed, fire is true. When S isn't pressed or else, fire is false. Now as of right now, if we press play and if we press our S key, nothing's gonna happen. But we shouldn't get any error messages, so that's good. The next thing we actually have to do is we have to set up a function or a program that actually says that, all right, when S is pressed, this rocket fires. Okay, now we could put this in our game. 
we could type this in our game, but it's gonna be kind of a long function. And if you wanna have multiple rockets, it's gonna become even longer. So we're actually gonna create our own function to separate the rocket commands out of our game. We also wanna call our function, our key type function to loop. So just below where we put key press, let's actually put key typed there. So that way our key will loop so we can press the fire key inevitably. We're gonna make our own function. And you can make your own function anywhere you want. It's just important that you don't do it inside any other function. So right here is my closed draw. Right here is my function key pressed. I'm gonna enter down in between those a little bit to give myself some space. And we're gonna make a new function called rockets. Let's go ahead and close rockets. And this is just gonna allow us to put our rocket code in a nice, more organized way. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is rocket positions. We have a variable called R1 position. Position zero with player one ready to be fired. Position one in motion after firing. And position two, collision with object return to P1. And here's why we need to do this. If we didn't put positions, if we didn't keep track of this, what would stop you from holding S and firing rockets inevitably? You'd have infinite ammo, infinite, infinite firing. With this system, you can control how many rockets the player is allowed to fire at a time, which therefore controls the difficulty of your game. Let's actually go ahead and draw our rocket. So for now, let's just put a, uh, a, a rectangle down and let's, uh, I don't wanna fill it the same shade of blue as the player or else we won't be able to see it. So let's make it like a light blue. So I'm gonna do 26, 175, uh, 255, this should be a nice light blue. And then let's draw a rectangle using our rocket variable. So R1X, R1Y, R width, R height. Okay. If we press play, we won't see our rockets because the rocket function isn't looping. It's not happening on its own. But if we go into our draw command here, run rocket function, we can call rockets to run in draw. Now I can see my light blue rocket right there on top of my player one rectangle. The next thing is let's actually make this thing fire. So we're gonna need a couple if statements here. Keep track and fire rockets. If fire equals equals true, that means that we've pressed the key, and the rocket isn't already or is with the person. So that means that the rocket hasn't already been fired. So this is gonna prevent somebody from firing the rocket rapidly, inevitably. So if fire equals equals true and R1 position equals equals zero, because R1 position means that the rocket is ready to be fired, R1 position equals one. So if you press the fire key and the rocket is at position zero, which we know means it's ready to be fired, then the position will change to one, which means that it's in motion. Now that won't actually do anything until you tell the computer what that means. So here's fire rockets code. If R1 position equals equals one, well then we want first off, the rocket, as we know, is gonna be following our player around. And here's what I mean by that. When I press my arrow keys, the rocket should actually be firing or following our player here. And then when we fire, the rocket's going to stay where it's supposed to be at and launch forward. So here's what we do. If R1 position equals equals one, R1X equals R1X, Stop following ship or P1. R1Y equals R1Y minus R speed. 
move vertically. And then if we exceed the window, so if we miss, we should come back down. If exceeds window or misses. If r1, y is less than or equal to 0, r1 position equals 2, reload. We have to close our fire if statement. And then we need an else that's saying R1 Y is equal to P1 Y. R1 X is equal to P1 X. And this is when you are not firing, the rocket should be with P1. Now, this should allow us to move around and the rocket follows us. And if I press S, the rocket fires. But the rocket does not yet return home. And here's why. We said R1 position equals two, but we never said what to do when R1 position equals two. We know that means reload, the computer does not. So reload on number two command. If R1 position equals equals two, that means that R1 y equals p1y, r1x equals p1x, and r1 position equals zero. Reset so you can fire again. So this will prevent, this will allow the rocket to return home, but it will prevent you from firing more rockets until the rocket has returned home. And we already said that if we exceed the window, return home. So let's give this a shot here. Press S, and the rocket returned after it exceeded the window. Fantastic. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to make a collision, a collision for our bad guy. So when the rocket collides with our alien, the alien disappears and the rocket returns back to home, and that will be part four.